Part 2, Chapters 20 through 39. Chapter 20 Heathen Analogies to Christian Doctrine. And the Sibyl and Histaspes said that there should be a dissolution by God of things corruptible. And the philosophers called Stoics teach that even God himself shall be resolved into fire, and they say that the world is to be formed anew by this revolution. But we understand that God, the creator of all things, is superior to the things that are to be changed. If, therefore, on some points we teach the same things as the poets and philosophers whom you honor, and on other points are fuller and more divine in our teaching, and if we alone afford proof of what we assert, why are we unjustly hated more than all others? For while we say that all things have been produced and arranged into a world by God, we shall seem to utter the doctrine of Plato, and while we say that there will be a burning up of all, we shall seem to utter the doctrine of the Stoics. And while we affirm that the souls of the wicked, being endowed with sensation even after death, are punished, and that those of the good being delivered from punishment spend a blessed existence, we shall seem to say the same things as the poets and philosophers. And while we maintain that men ought not to worship the works of their hands, we say the very things which have been said by the comic poet Menander, and other similar writers, for they have declared that the workman is greater than the work. Chapter 21. Analogies to the History of Christ. And when we say also that the Word, who is the first birth of God, was produced without sexual union, and that he, Jesus Christ our Teacher, was crucified and died and rose again and ascended into heaven, we propound nothing different from what you believe regarding those whom you esteem sons of Jupiter. For you know how many sons your esteemed writers ascribe to Jupiter, Mercury, the interpreting word and teacher of all, Escalapius, who, though he was a great physician, was struck by a thunderbolt, and so ascended to heaven, and Bacchus, too, after he had been torn limb from limb, and Hercules, when he had committed himself to the flames to escape his toils, and the sons of Leda, and Dioscore, and Perseus, son of Dani, and Bellerophon, who, though sprung from mortals, rose to heaven on the horse Pegasus. For what shall I say of Ariadne, and those who, like her, have been declared to be set among the stars? And what of the emperors who die among yourselves, whom you deem worthy of deification, and in whose behalf you produce some one who swears he has seen the burning Caesar rise to heaven from the funeral pyre? And what kind of deeds are recorded of these reputed sons of Jupiter, it is needless to tell to those who already know. This only shall be said, that they are written for the advantage and encouragement of youthful scholars, for all reckon it an honorable thing to imitate the gods. But far be such a thought concerning the gods from every well-conditioned soul, as to believe that Jupiter himself, the governor and creator of all things, was both a parricide and the son of a parricide, and that being overcome by the love of base and shameful pleasures, he came in to Ganymede and those many women whom he had violated and that his sons did like actions. But, as we said above, wicked devils perpetrated these things, and we have learned that those only are deified who have lived near to God in holiness and virtue, and we believe that those who live wickedly and do not repent are punished in everlasting fire. Chapter 22 Analogies to the Sonship of Christ Moreover, the Son of God, called Jesus, even if only a man by ordinary generation, yet on account of his wisdom, is worthy to be called the Son of God. For all writers call God the Father of men and gods. And if we assert that the Word of God was born of God in a peculiar manner, different from ordinary generation, let this, as said above, be no extraordinary thing to you, who say that Mercury is the angelic Word of God. But if any one objects that he was crucified, in this also he is on a par with those reputed sons of Jupiter of yours, who suffered as we have now enumerated. For their sufferings at death are recorded to have been not all alike, but diverse, so that not even by the peculiarity of his sufferings does he seem to be inferior to them, but on the contrary, as we promised in the preceding part of this discourse, we will now prove him superior or rather have already proved him to be so, for the superior is revealed by his actions. And if we even affirm that he was born of a virgin, accept this in common with what you accept of Perseus, 
and in that we say that he made whole the lame, the paralytic, and those born blind, we seem to say what is very similar to the deed said to have been done by Aesculapius. Chapter 23. The Argument And that this may now become evident to you, firstly, that whatever we assert in conformity with what has been taught us by Christ and by the prophets who preceded him are alone true, and are older than all the writers who have existed, that we claim to be acknowledged, not because we say the same things as these writers said, but because we say true things, and, secondly, that Jesus Christ is the only proper Son who has been begotten by God, being his word and first begotten, and power, and, becoming man according to his will, he taught us these things for the conversion and restoration of the human race, and thirdly, that before he became a man among men, some, influenced by the demons before mentioned, related beforehand, through the instrumentality of the poets, those circumstances as having really happened, which, having fictitiously devised, they narrated, in the same manner as they have caused to be fabricated, the scandalous reports against us of infamous and impious actions, of which there is neither witness nor proof, we shall bring forward the following proof. Chapter 24. Varieties of Heathen Worship. In the first place we furnish proof, because, though we say things similar to what the Greeks say, we only are hated on account of the name of Christ, and though we do no wrong, are put to death as sinners. Other men in other places worshipping trees and rivers, and mice and cats and crocodiles, and many irrational animals. Nor are the same animals esteemed by all, but in one place one is worshipped, and another in another so that all are profane in the judgment of one another, on account of their not worshipping the same objects. And this is the sole accusation you bring against us, that we do not reverence the same gods as you do, nor offer to the dead libations and the savour of fat, and crowns for their statues and sacrifices. For you very well know that the same animals are with some esteemed gods, with others wild beasts, and with others sacrificial victims." Chapter 25. False Gods Abandoned by Christians And secondly, because we, who, out of every race of men, used to worship Bacchus, the son of Semele, and Apollo, the son of Latona, who in their loves with men did such things as it is shameful even to mention, and Proserpine and Venus, who were maddened with love of Adonis, and whose mysteries also you celebrate, or Aesculapius, or some one or other of those who are called gods, have now, through Jesus Christ, learned to despise these, though we be threatened with death for it, and have dedicated ourselves to the unbegotten and impossible God, of whom we are persuaded that never was he goaded by lust of Antiope, or such other women, or of Ganymede, nor was rescued by that hundred-handed giant whose aid was obtained through Thetis, nor was anxious on this account that her son Achilles should destroy many of the Greeks because of his concubine Briseis. Those who believe these things we pity, and those who invented them we know to be devils. Chapter 26. Magicians Not Trusted by Christians And thirdly, because after Christ's ascension into heaven the devils put forward certain men who said that they themselves were gods, and they were not only not persecuted by you, but even deemed worthy of honors. There was a Samaritan, Simon, a native of the village called Gito, who in the reign of Claudius Caesar, and in your royal city of Rome, did mighty acts of magic, by virtue of the art of the devils operating in him. He was considered a god, and as a god was honored by you with a statue, which statue was erected on the river Tiber, between the two bridges, and bore this inscription, in the language of Rome, Simoni Deo Sancto, to Simon the Holy God. And almost all the Samaritans, and a few even of other nations, worship him, and acknowledge him as the first god, and a woman, Helena, who went about with him at that time, and had formerly been a prostitute, they say is the first idea generated by him and a man, Meander, also a Samaritan, of the town Caparatia, a disciple of Simon and inspired by devils, we know to have deceived many while he was in Antioch by his magical art. He persuaded those who adhered to him that they should never die, and even now there are some living who hold this opinion of his. 
And there is Marcion, a man of Pontus, who is even at this day alive, and teaching his disciples to believe in some other god greater than the Creator. And he, by the aid of the devils, has caused many of every nation to speak blasphemies, and to deny that God is the maker of this universe, and to assert that some other being, greater than he, has done greater works. All who take their opinions from these men are, as we before said, called Christians, just as also those who do not agree with the philosophers in their doctrines have yet in common with them the name of philosophers given to them. And whether they perpetrate those fabulous and shameful deeds, the upsetting of the lamp, and promiscuous intercourse, and eating human flesh, we know not, but we do know that they are neither persecuted nor put to death by you, at least on account of their opinions. But I have a treatise against all the heresies that have existed already composed, which, if you wish to read it, I will give you. Chapter 27. Guilt of Exposing Children but as for us, we have been taught that to expose newly born children is the part of wicked men, and this we have been taught lest we should do any one an injury, and lest we should sin against God, first, because we see that almost all so exposed, not only the girls but also the males, are brought up to prostitution. And as the ancients are said to have reared herds of oxen or goats or sheep or grazing horses, so now we see you rear children only for this shameful use, and for this pollution a multitude of females and hermaphrodites, and those who commit unmentionable iniquities are found in every nation. And you receive the hire of these, and duty and taxes from them, whom you ought to exterminate from your realm. And any one who uses such persons, besides the godless and infamous and impure intercourse, may possibly be having intercourse with his own child, or relative, or brother. And there are some who prostitute even their own children and wives, and some are openly mutilated for the purpose of sodomy, and they refer these mysteries to the mother of the gods, and along with each of those whom you esteem gods there is painted a serpent, a great symbol and mystery. Indeed, the things which you do openly and with applause, as if the divine light were overturned and extinguished, these you lay to our charge, which, in truth, does no harm to us who shrink from doing any such things, but only to those who do them and bear false witness against us. Chapter 28. God's Care for Men For among us the prince of the wicked spirits is called the serpent and Satan and the devil, as you can learn by looking into our writings. And that he would be sent into the fire with his host and the men who follow him, and would be punished for an endless duration, Christ foretold. For the reason why God has delayed to do this is his regard for the human race. For he foreknows that some are to be saved by repentance, some even that are perhaps not yet born. In the beginning he made the human race with the power of thought and of choosing the truth and doing right, so that all men are without excuse before God, for they have been born rational and contemplative. And if any one disbelieves that God cares for these things, he will thereby either insinuate that God does not exist, or he will assert that though he exists he delights in vice, or exists like a stone, and that neither virtue nor vice are anything, but only in the opinion of men these things are reckoned good or evil. And this is the greatest profanity and wickedness. Chapter 29. Continence of Christians and again we fear to expose children, lest some of them be not picked up, but die, and we become murderers. But whether we marry, it is only that we may bring up children, or whether we decline marriage, we live continently. And that you may understand that promiscuous intercourse is not one of our mysteries, one of our number a short time ago presented to Felix the governor in Alexandria a petition, craving that permission might be given to a surgeon to make him a eunuch for the surgeons there said that they were forbidden to do this without the permission of the governor. And when Felix absolutely refused to sign such a permission, the youth remained single, and was satisfied with his own approving conscience, and the approval of those who thought as he did. And it is not out of place, we think, to mention here Antinous, who was alive but lately, and whom all were prompt through fear to worship as a god, though they knew both who he was and what was his origin. Chapter 30. 
Was Christ not a magician? But lest any one should meet us with the question, what should prevent that he whom we call Christ, being a man born of men, performed what we call his mighty works by magical art, and by this appeared to be the Son of God? We will now offer proof, not trusting mere assertions, but being of necessity persuaded by those who prophesied of him before these things came to pass, for with our own eyes we behold things that have happened, and are happening just as they were predicted, and this will, we think, appear even to you the strongest and truest evidence. Chapter 31 Of the Hebrew Prophets there were then among the Jews certain men who were prophets of God, through whom the prophetic spirit published beforehand things that were to come to pass, ere they ever happened. And their prophecies, as they were spoken and when they were uttered, the kings who happened to be reigning among the Jews at the several times, carefully preserved in their possession, when they had been arranged in books by the prophets themselves in their own Hebrew language. And when Ptolemy, king of Egypt, formed a library, and endeavored to collect the writings of all men, he heard also of these prophets, and sent to Herod, who was at that time king of the Jews, requesting that the books of the prophets be sent to him. And Herod the king did indeed send them, written as they were, in the foresaid Hebrew language. And when their contents were found to be unintelligible to the Egyptians, he again sent and requested that men be commissioned to translate them into the Greek language. And when this was done, the books remained with the Egyptians, where they are until now. They are also in the possession of all Jews throughout the world, but they, though they read, do not understand what is said, but count us foes and 